In this chapter, we're going to be diving into the specific modeling conventions that I would like you to follow. We're going to be doing this with a lot of kind of hands-on work in SketchUp to dig right in. First, groups and components. Organization is critical both to your sanity within SketchUp, but also when we get to Unity. The ability to kind of toggle on and off different alternatives at, at a bare minimum will depend on you setting up the model well in SketchUp and having that same hierarchy kind of fall you into Unity. So with that, let's, uh, let's jump in. From the associated course materials, you'll be able to find inside the Course 2 SketchUp folder, 01 groups and organization.skp. There are a number of things here I want to cover. The first, and I apologize if this is a little bit remedial, but I just I want to harp on this fact very intentionally that if these minor conventions that we follow up front, you're going to be creating dozens and dozens and maybe hundreds of hours of work for you and others in your office to make these 3D models. And if you if you follow these conventions up front and everyone's aware of them, you will have a much more seamless experience and you won't have to, at the 11th hour especially, when we're getting into performance bottlenecks, you know, potentially, end up having to recreate some of this stuff. So, again, apologies. The basics. Everything in SketchUp is sticky. If I go into this group and I draw a little rectangle and maybe we'll pop it up. I'll draw another one and pop it up. Both, you know, I, I can't, I can't have this, this cube touch this other cube and then move it away without it getting stuck to it. Everything in SketchUp, the geometry just by its nature is sticky, for lack of a better word. And for us, I think it's important that we start selecting things and making discrete groups out of them. I mean, that's the most fundamental reason why we make groups in SketchUp, is to separate one piece of geometry from the others. I think secondly, we want to use groups, and I can't stress this enough, not layers, as our kind of organizing typology for our model. We'll come back to layers here in, a, in a, just a little bit. But, so here's a sample kind of organizational strategy, and there's a fair amount of flexibility to this. This is just one that I, that I followed in both these course materials and generally in, in my practice. This is kind of, you can see, just kind of a vertically exploded 3D model. And at the bottom here, we have a group. Uh, it's it's our, kind of our ground plane. All this geometry is live inside of there. This group, I would like to point out, is named ground. Again, one of the things that's really important moving into, into Unity is that this isn't named group number 732. That instead, it has a name that means something, so you can find it. Likewise, above that, we have our, our buildings, uh, our buildings group. So this is, this is a collection of, of other groups and components, which is fine. And we'll talk about what's the right level of grouping kind of below there a little bit later. But generally, you know, following something like that's appropriate. Trees are another group. Uh, each of these are, are individual components. There's two different flavors. And then we have like detail elements. So this could be things like light posts, bike racks, benches and trash cans. Uh, in this case, like generally, it is just holding fencing. Lastly, we have things like cars. People are another really common layer. And then lane striping is another one that, we, you know, kind of in the urban environment, we tend to need to change that a fair amount. So I actually usually keep it separate from the ground plane group. Sometimes I stick it up, you know, inside of it. So if I were to cut this and put it, you know, inside of this group, I'll and just hide those together and keep it, you know, still within that hierarchy, but in its own group, apart from this geometry that's live there, it can be a good strategy. Let's touch on the difference between groups and components. Groups are just an organizational feature. They are what lets you separate things from, from one object from another. Components do the same thing, except with components, like these windows or even this, this row home model, if you start to make changes to this, like let's take its chimney and make it aggressively tall, you can see that it shares that change with other components of its type. And because of the nature of the changes that we potentially have to make to, to models, I can't stress enough that if you're going to have any object that is going to be used more than once, it probably should be a component. And it probably should have a meaningful name. Uh, let's see if I did a good job. Townhouse 1, you can see here. 
This is the Entity Info dialog box. So that's what will enable us to then find this on the back end in Unity when we want to change a texture or hide all of the townhouse ones for a particular reason. One of the other features that I think is really useful when using components is the ability to replace things globally. If we go over to this Replace Scene tab, uh, the idea might be that our tree model, for whatever reason, is inappropriate. Maybe the trees don't really look to have that shape or the color's wrong or, or, or something. If we select a number of components, let's say all of them along the street edge, and go into our components, let's roll that up, go to our home so we can look at the components that are just in this model, and we want to replace it with this simple 3D old tree, which is this other kind of darker green one. Once I have these selected, I can right-click on this and say, Replace Selected. And it simply replaces them all. And this, again, just a, a huge time saver for you that I think you should be aware of.